Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much for joining me. This is Biking Buddies, and this is a big one. No, that's an understatement of the decade. This is a huge one. This is day one of a four day trip of the North Coast 500. So I'm here with good friends Carl, who's exploring the castle, and I'm here with good friends Richie. So the three of us are going to circumnavigate the NC 500 running this route counterclockwise. So the video is going to come at you in four four parts so four days four days worth of sittings um, so as always strap yourselves in guys get yourself a beer or two make yourself comfortable and come with us on this NC 500 epic biking buddies adventure cue those titles where do you go when you're young when you're restless when you're fun because you're desperate Okay then folks, so that sees us uh, leaving Inverness. As you can see, we've got a very, very much improving forecast. Nice high level cloud, lots of blue sky now. And we are working our way up to our first night stop, which tonight incidentally is going to be a wild camp. So we're just about to cross the River Ness over the uh, Inverness Bridge and we've got Inverness City over there to my left. We've got a little bit of an inversion going on. What an absolutely fantastic start to our ride. I'm plumb last at the moment. I've opted to stick at the back of the pack for this first leg. And we're now off to a place called the Big Burn Gorge. And we're gonna have a little walk up to uh, Big Burn Falls, one of those little hidden gems on the NC500. So whilst we're uh, just in the very opening stages of this uh, video on day one, Wow, look at that for a view. We've quite possibly got one of the better forecasts for the opening stages of this uh, ride. For the first few days, we've got very, very light winds indeed, which is perfect because for the first few nights, we are wild camping. Um, something I'm very, very much looking forward to. So this sees us pulling into uh, the little village of Golsby. And Golsby is uh, where we're going to get parked up and we're going to uh, explore these hills off to our left hand side. There's a little bit of a gorge up there that we're going to have a wander up and go have a look at the Big Burn Falls. Now a lot of people say that the uh, east side, the A9, uh, working up towards uh, John O'Groats uh, is uh, relatively dull and boring. Um, scenery wise, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, there are some quite nice things to look at on the way up, but it certainly isn't the 3000 thousand foot mountains that are normally associated with uh, the NC and that's primarily why I've decided to run this route counterclockwise rather than clockwise uh, just because the scenery will get better and better as we work our way around from Inverness ultimately all the way around the 514 miles back to Inverness so we're not far away from our uh, little stopping point here and uh, we're going to get geared up and go for a little bit of an off-the-bike explore. And that is what the NC500 is all about. the big burn falls very definitely worth getting off the bike and having a look absolutely fantastic little walk um, up there about a kilometer and a half to get to the falls and obviously the same back it's an out and back wow what a fantastic little stop that was so that was the big burn gorge and it's listed in the uh, NC500 guidebook, incidentally, as one of those hidden gems, and it most certainly is well worth a stop. And just a 15 minute, half an hour walk, just uh, up the gorge, have a look around. And uh, yeah, very, very worthwhile doing. So we're pushing on northward now, and we're heading up towards the very famous Wheeligo Steps. We've got a beautiful clearing sky, as you can see there from Miracam. And we've got a very nice flowing road. And this is just easing us into the general flavor of the NC500, which is just a little bit more of a slower, relaxed pace of life. We're not particularly rushing to get anywhere. We've got oodles of time, uh, but the essence of it is now just to slow down, 
go through that normal day two days just unwinding from work relaxing and settling into what will ultimately come the very barren emptiness of the NC500 wow look at this what a cracking place so we're about two minutes into this walk and we've just come up onto this little bit of a headland here you can see Richie over there so we literally come off the top of the car park just down to here saw this little bit of a waterfall just to uh, the side of the Whaley Go steps there they are down there come along and just have a look at this wow let's get right up to the end and just have a little bit of a look this is definitely most definitely the drone spot So the bottom of Wheelie Go Steps, there they are behind me with Carl. We're just about to start the uh, long, arduous climb up. So let's have uh, a quick look around then, shall we? What an amazing cove this is. You've just seen there some uh, cracking drone footage. But yeah, wow, absolutely gin clear, crystal clear water. What a hidden gem this is. Well, not really hidden. It's widely published on the NC500, but you'd certainly ride past this spot and you wouldn't even know it was there to be fair so uh, yeah let's start this big old trip back up these steps well there's Carl waiting for us already <laughs> I can see the pub from here yeah definitely man alive wow what a difference that uh, half an hour 45 minutes stop mid we've got uh, just slight little spatterings of rain in the sky but a bone dry road it is unbelievably warm relatively speaking when you're wearing full biking kit of course uh, yeah, it's turned out to be fantastic. Some of the scenery that we've seen so far is exactly what we expected. Wheelie Go Steps certainly lived up to uh, what I was expecting personally. And as I say, they're climbing out of the gorge. I uh, would rate that uh, very highly, possibly even a 10 out of 10. Uh, thankfully, we're at the beginning of the season, as it were. So we're just on the Easter break, as you know. And uh, whilst it's uh, busy enough to be busy, there are people around, don't get me wrong. Um, it's not ridiculously busy. So we're working our way up towards Wick now. We're making very good progress, as you'd well imagine, on the bike with fairly empty roads. And a lot of people really do slate off the uh, east side run, um, certainly from uh, Inverness up to uh, John O'Groats and uh, maybe even the very, very top section of Sutherland working counterclockwise. Now for me, as you can see with roads that we've got like this in front of us, um, but what you have got is this really nice, wide, open, flowing road and I suppose it's all relative to the mode of transport that you choose but certainly for us being on bikes when you've got these nice long sweeping bends lots and lots of overtaking opportunities it's an absolute pleasure to ride this road and the scenery isn't dull dull um, but it is far from unpleasant and it is certainly one that uh, if you're planning a NC500 trip I certainly wouldn't listen to all of the hype um, and just take this as a bit of a dead day a bit of a done dull day because it is it very much is far from that it's absolutely fantastic very enjoyable So speaking of on the money, we're also on the move again and we're now heading to our next uh, viewpoint which is possibly uh, one of the most famous castles in ruin uh, which is Sinclair Castle. Really looking forward to this, it's a little bit of a walk over the headland, it's definitely going to be drone-tastic. It's also just on the uh, outskirts, uh, the eastern side of the town of Wick. Uh, which is where we're going to get some provisions because tonight, dear boy, tonight is a wild camp. We are under the stars. So here we are then, Castle Sinclair. What an amazing place. 
who's that trip trapping over my bridge indeed How amazing is this? Whoa, incredible. It's like a scene in Game of Thrones. Or the Iron Islands. Wow, this must have been one imposing castle back in the day. There's Carlos. This place is incredible. So I think we need to get the drone up just so that we can get a full appreciation of exactly where we are and what we're looking at. The conservation project's doing its level best to stop this place being taken by the sea. But you can see the location that we've got right on the edge of the coast here. They must be fighting a pretty much a losing battle. And the beauty about this place, like a lot of places that we're visiting on the NC, is uh, it's free to come in. It's free to come and have a look. There's a donation box somewhere. I haven't actually seen it. I've read that in one of the guidebooks. Uh, but yeah, there is a donation box somewhere. So we'll get ourselves up on the headland and let's get the drone up and uh, get a full appreciation of uh, Castle Sinclair. I love this entrance. This is incredible. Right, so that sees us done at Castle Sinclair. Then we're going to make our way back to the bikes now. Absolutely amazing there. Hopefully that drone footage came out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. So yeah, stick with us. Plenty more to come here on day one on the NC500. So Castle Sinclair over there. You have been amazing. Yeah, fantastic seeing that place. So the next stop now, as I say, is get some vittles. So we're uh, off to uh, Tesco's which is our last superstore before we disappear off into the wilds. Okay, so this feels slightly weird, just looking at me, looking at you. Uh, here we are at Tesco's up in Wick. This is the last big town that we'll go through. You can see the guys there. We've just uh, got our vittles for the night. So uh, next stop just up the road is John O'Groats. Gonna have a look at that and then go find our wild camp at Dunnethead Lighthouse, somewhere in that kind of region. So uh, yeah, it's been a really good day so far. Still nice and clear, still nice and dry. Odd little spots of rain, but we've got dry roads. Everybody's in good spirits and uh, we're coming towards the end of day one. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. So uh, yeah, we've got a little bit more to go. The iconic uh, John O'Groats and then uh, go find our wild camp. So let's join us when we're back on the bike. And here we are then, John O'Groach. So Edinburgh, 273 miles we passed through there. Land's End, 874 miles. So let's see if we can get the obligatory photo. 
So we're now away from Jonah Groats. We've just got our final little, let's have a look down there, 17 miles to do to Dunnett Head Lighthouse. That is where our wild camp spot or somewhere in that region is tonight. There's the boys yet, they're behind me. And you'll certainly see looking around us there, Jonah Groats that the weather has certainly closed in a little bit. It looks fairly wall-to-wall -wall gray. I'm fairly sure. All the pool, 170 miles. That's later, day three. So yeah, I am fairly sure that this weather is set in. We're gonna have a little bit of a damp evening, but uh, the weather forecast did say the odd shower, and that's what we've got. But because the winds are relatively light, um, it is taking a little bit of time to blow over. So we've got this 17 miles to go to take us up to Dunnett Head and Dunnett Head is the most northerly point in mainland Britain not John O'Groats as some people may may well think temperatures dropped down to 19 degrees from 15 so yeah we're having uh, quite a few seasons today as you'd well expect in this part of the world perfectly normal standard drills and really as we're starting to work our way dead west at the moment we're uh, going to traverse the northern edge of Sutherland so we'll have uh, the North Sea and North Atlantic on our right hand side for company and we'll have the barren wilds of the Scottish Highlands across to our left as we uh, work our way around this route through into day two and beyond. Right, let's get the photo for posterity. It's just started raining again. So Dunnett Head, the most northerly point of mainland Britain. There we are, let's see if we can get the lighthouse in the background. That looks good, yeah. So I'm going to go and have a quick look at the lighthouse, seeing as we're here, and then we're going to get ourselves set up with our camp. So let's have a look at this. Dunnett Head Lighthouse. What an exposed spot this is. I'm not get the drone out. It's a little bit breezy, and uh, to be fair, it's also raining. I'm not overly keen on uh, getting the drone wet. So if Carl can get through, I can get through, I'm sure. I think Carl is ever so slightly wider than me. Yep, we're through, and this takes us up to uh, up to our wild camping spot. How unbelievably fantastic is this? So we're looking east, direct over towards uh, John O'Groats. And we've already uh, done a little bit of a recce on foot. That's the one, Carl. Well, hello folks, so here we are, hopefully you can hear me for the wind, I'm a little bit out of breath, I'm high up here, we are at Dunnett Head, we've got the lighthouse here behind me, this is the most northerly point on the British Isles, we're wild camping tonight, so I'm just going to spin the camera around so that you can see the boys, where we set up there behind me, that is our wild camp spot, what a fantastic place. So we have been sympathetic to everybody else. We've got our tent set up now. We're just about to uh, start the cooking process. So let's have a look. Yeah, as I was saying, we found this uh, little bit of concrete hard stand in here. It looks like it's left over for some uh, military purposes or lookout purposes. So there's our bikes, Richie and Richie's tent. Yours truly, yours truly tent. Carl on the KTM and Carl's palatious tent so let's have a little bit of a wander around I mean what a place we've got such an elevated view and looking out to the east for tomorrow boards incredibly well uh, for a good day so yeah I'm gonna jump into the tent now we're gonna get some food on I'm gonna set a night lapse up hopefully that'll work if you're watching the night lapse in the next couple of seconds it worked if you didn't we'll be cutting to day two um, so if you have stuck with me till the very end then thank you very much for your company as always don't forget to stay tuned guys this is day one of four I will bring these videos to you in four day episodes with Carl the boys uh, and myself uh, filming as we go so yes as I say if you stuck with me till the end then thank you very much as always wherever you are in the world guys whatever you're doing keep it safe keep your shiny side up and we'll catch you in episode two catch you later guys cheers bye now bye